Welcome to DeFi Crypto Today. Our topic today is how to avoid scams. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot of scams going around. Yeah, and I got the, the scammer right here, a little raccoon here. What did you do? He He's the one behind all the scams that you hear about. Yes, he, he's behind the ring nodes, the parrots thou and all kinds of nasty things yeah that's that's him i found him so <laughs> we're gonna talk today about how to avoid getting scams by little raccoons like these okay go away all right <laughs> all right so i designed this chart for those that want the chart as uh to help them uh, remember what to look for in a project and what to avoid. Uh, this is this chart is going to be available for paid YouTube members only. If you're not a member, you're not getting it. It's all mine. So no, no. <laughs> so if you're already a paid member, you're getting this free. It's part of your uh, package. Okay, I distribute free things to paid members okay why because they're nice okay <laughs> and they pay to help uh, grow this channel all right <laughs> so let's uh let's zoom in and let's have a look at all this in greater detail so there are lots of things to consider before okay you have to do all this stuff before you invest and even after you've done all this, it's still not a guarantee that your money is safe. Remember all that, okay? Your money is not safe anywhere on earth. You keep your money at the bank, you think it's safe? No, it's not safe. The government is uh, printing money like crazy. It's creating inflation. Your money, the power, the purchasing power of your money at the bank is shrinking like this. So even money at the bank is not safe. Money under your mattress is even less safe. There's no place safe. Remember that. So even after we go through all these verifications, okay, it's not a guarantee that your money is going to be safe. And that's why I always say in practically all my videos, you need to diversify. And if it's a brand new project, like most people are excited about brand new projects because old projects are old, you know, so, uh, <laughs> you know, when it lands old already, it's, it's like, uh, what? Uh, it started four months ago. Uh, gotta get uh, the newest and shiniest and brightest uh, protocol that just came out that I don't know anything about. People, 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 use logic. We're gonna try to use logic here, okay? Because it's a, it, for some reason, there's a lot of emotion going in the financial markets. People are scared, people are greedy, people get greedy and scared. They, 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 okay, that's not the way to look at things. That's not the way to invest your money. Okay? So, let, let, let's start by uh, looking at what we need to, to focus on. Okay? The first thing is, the most important thing is the team. Who the heck is behind that project? Do we know anything about them? So, let, let, let's check this out. So, we need to start by evaluating the team. Is the team publicly known, i.e. not anonymous? Most projects in crypto are anonymous. Some are not. Wonderland is not anonymous. Daniel A is a very famous person in the crypto world. And there are other projects like that. Okay, there are other crypto celebrities. Uh, Ethereum, for instance, Vitalik Buterin is a very well-known public figure. Okay, people trust... Uh, uh, Ethereum and the Ethereum network, okay, the guy is well known. There's several other projects out there with well known public figures, okay. There are very good projects also that are done by totally anonymous teams. But you should be wary, okay. It doesn't mean that because it's anonymous that it's good, <laughs> okay. It's Pretty much the opposite okay sometimes you have good anonymous teams not always all right so is the uh, the team publicly known 
if we know the team, that's already one thing that we can count on. If the project goes awry, we can go and knock at their door, okay, or send the FBI at them or something. Okay, you can send your lawyer there, you can do something to try to get your money if something goes really wrong. If the, pub and the, the team is totally anonymous and you have no idea where they are, your money is pretty much lost and it's going to be very, very, very hard to get anything back. So think about that first. Now, I do respect the fact that a lot of people in crypto want to remain anonymous. Okay, that's their right. But it's also our right to get some form of security because we're putting our money at risk. So let's say if the team is known, okay, we go no. Do we have evidence that the team is docs or KYC? Okay, so maybe they're, not, they're anonymous to the general public, but are they identified? through uh, to uh, some organizations, okay? Like uh, RugDoc, for instance, has a KYC process. You don't want to show your face to everybody, but you show your face to the RugDoc people. They charge you a few thousand dollars for that, and, and they verify who you are, they get your identification, and so on. Um, the, the, the Assure is another place, and there's a, there's a few places like that where you can get KYC, okay? So you can identify yourself to the, uh, these groups. These groups are well respected in the crypto world. So, uh, and they can certify, yeah, we, we know who that person is, okay? So that's better than having somebody totally anonymous and you have no idea who that is and you can rug pull you any time of the day or night, okay? Now, do we have evidence that the team has known partners? Sometimes the team is anonymous, but they have well-known partners, okay? So, for instance, Project X could be, you know, partnering with the Solana Foundation or the Avalanche Foundation, okay? Those people would know who the, uh, the promoters of that project are. They, uh, they have to identify themselves with them. Otherwise, how the, the foundation and the avalanche or the Solana Foundation is going to give them money just for the fun of it? No, they, they, they're going to verify some stuff. They're going to do some KYC or and they're going to get docs there. And you're going to uh, have the assurance that if the foundation X, like avalanche, Solana or whatever, uh, trust them, then you have... Uh, you know, you can probably figure, okay, well, if those guys trust them, that mitigates the risk somewhat. It doesn't eliminate the risk, but it mitigates it, okay? So you trust that uh, these people are trusted by someone else that you trust. Too, too much trust, okay? Don't trust too much, okay? And this, that, that, that's what I'm trying to wake you up to those facts here, okay? Don't trust just about anybody because they, uh, they say they've got a billion, trillion percent that they're going to give you overnight. Now, do we have evidence that the team has other successful projects? There are projects, there are teams that are totally anonymous, but they already have a project going and it's successful and they decided to create another project. Okay? So, if they didn't uh, rock pull on, on the first project, why would they rock pull on the second project? It kind of ruined their reputation, right? It doesn't, that, that doesn't really make sense to me. So that, that, that's what we need to, uh, to understand. So if, ideally, you, need, you want all four yeses, okay? A publicly known uh, uh, team that's uh, already, you know, kyc properly, that has uh, well-known partners and that has successful project. If you've got all that, see, so you, you, I say here, we want as many yeses as possible. Three or four yeses in there would be ideal. If you get only one, okay. But uh, it, it's better to have as many as possible, all right? So if we have all that, then we can pr um, proceed to the next step, which is evaluate the audit. So going here, at evaluate the audit. So, and uh, remember here I'm saying, do we have evidence? 
I said that here as well. If the, uh, if the te team says uh, their KYC seed with uh, Joe Blow, well, do, where's the evidence? Okay? If they say the KYC seed with RugDuck, RugDuck uh, typically gives them a little certificate that uh, they can paste on their website. And when you go on the RugDuck website, you can verify that. That's evidence. Somebody saying, oh yeah, I'm KYC, no problem. With whom? Uh, uh, okay, you know what I mean? You need to be able to have verifiable information. Don't just trust people's words, okay? People's words are worth nothing in the crypto world. Absolutely nothing. If they say, oh yeah, the audit's coming, the KYC is coming, the, uh, this is coming, this is com Okay, coming doesn't mean it exists, It okay? You remember that. You need evidence. If uh, Assure KYC somebody the, uh, the issue an NFT, and you can actually verify that. Rockdog, same thing. You, you, you get a little logo, you can go to the Rockdog website, you can contact Rockdog and say, did you actually KYC this guy or not? You need to be able to verify all this. Same thing, if they say they have known partners, well, can you go on the partner's website or on their Twitter page and can they refer to that project and they say, yeah, we're partnering with Project X. That's what I mean by evidence. Don't just believe people's words. So, do we have evidence that the protocol is already audited? Well, if there's evidence, you go on Certic, for instance, if they say they were audited by Certic, and when you search for the, the project number, uh, project name, and if it's audited, it says audited, and then you have the audit results. On the other hand, maybe the, uh, the protocol is undergoing an audit, so if it's undergoing an audit, same thing. Send me the link to your uh, to the uh, audit that you ordered. Okay, on Certic you can actually see it. It says audit is uh, is undergoing. Okay, or in process, and it says we're at thirty percent of the audit right now, or at seventy percent of the audit, or whatever. Okay, so you know it's real. If they say, oh, yeah, 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 we, we, we talked to uh, Certic, we want to do an audit with them. Okay, you want to do an audit with them? Did you uh, order the audit? Did you actually pay for it? No, it doesn't exist. You don't have a freaking audit. That's what that means. Okay, Ringnode uh, kept saying, oh, yeah, we're going to get an audit. Uh, we, we talked to Certic and all that. Yeah, yeah, you go to uh, Certic's website, you, you, you type Ring Financial, there's no trace of an audit there, there's no trace of an order of an audit. There's nothing. Verify. You need to check the evidence. Do we have evidence that the team is planning an audit? Okay. This is not very good, but it's better than nothing. Okay. If they're saying, yes, in Q1 of next year, we're planning to have an audit. We just have not decided which auditor we're going to use yet. Okay. All right. However, that's still not very good. This is better, and this is even better. Uh, an audit that's done is better than an audit underway because they might cancel or God knows what. And, and when they say, oh, yeah, we're planning to have an audit, it's better than a team that says, no, we're not going to have an audit. But it's not much better. Because here we have no evidence that they're actually going to pay. Right? So remember that. So here, again, you want at least one full audit from a reputable firm. At least one. I just did a video... Uh, about Alpaca Finance on the Delta Neutral Strategy Part 2, which you should watch because it's a great video. <laughs> Alpaca did 15 audits. 15! Right? You don't just do one audit, okay? You, you need... Every time you change the code, every time you add a feature, you should get audited. And preferably before you launch. What if you launch and there's a ton of bugs and hackers uh, uh, swarm in there and take all the cash? God knows, right? Do things the right way. And you, as an investor, should check for this, okay? And demand it, 
Okay? Don't put your money there if they say, no, we're not going to do no stinking audit. Okay, you really want to risk your money there? It's a little bit like uh, you go to uh, a bank and they say, ah, we don't need no security guard. Actually, you know what? The safe, we can leave it open. We don't even need to turn on the alarm. Okay, you want to keep your money there? Oh, we're going to give you 200% per day at that bank. You trust them? Yeah. But that's what people are doing on crypto. Uh, wake up. <laughs> All right. So the third thing we need to check is, is there a multi-sig? Multi-sig means you need multiple signatures to open up the vault and, and move the cash around. And not just that, but we need uh, the multi-sig to control the contracts, all, all the programs okay, that are running the, the protocol that are moving cash around and all that stuff. They need to be controlled by multi-sig. You need a, a group of people, okay? Typically it's five, six, seven people. And you need at least, uh, if you've got, uh, let's say six people, you need like four or five to, uh, to uh, to sign off on moving the funds, so uh, so you, you need a group of people that have to agree. Yeah, okay, we are allowed this to happen, and all the contracts in the co in the protocol should be uh, controlled like that. Why? Well, because sometimes there's people that work there. Okay, that can uh, steal money. Okay, here's, here's the thing that happens, okay? I used to work in a bank decades ago. I'm really old, okay? And what we were told is that banks never advertise when money is stolen because they're afraid the, uh, the customers are going to have a run at the bank. They're going to take all their cash and the, the bank's going to collapse, Okay. And one thing that, uh, that uh, they never advertise that most of the money that's stolen at the bank is stolen by the employees. Same thing here. The promoters may be honest people. Many times, the, okay, this, this is what's happening. I saw three cases in the last month. Three cases where money got stolen from protocols. Who did it? The dev. The dev is, was not a promoter, okay? They, 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 and they have more than one dev. So one of the devs in the team got himself a little back door somewhere and managed to uh, siphon away the money. This happens many times. Why it happens? Because they did not uh, multi-sig all the freaking contracts. And you, you have to understand also, the, okay, that a lot of developers... Uh, a lot of promoters of projects are very young and very naive. You have to understand that a lot of projects are run by people that are very young, very naive, and very inexperienced. There's some projects out there. I'm willing to bet that the people in charge are teenagers in high school that learn how to code uh, Solidity. The mistakes they make are horrendous. You see bugs on, on the interface, okay? You look at the Discord and you, you look at the complaints from people. Uh, they change the code every couple of days. They say, oh, you got to move to version 2.1.3.4 uh, and so on. I saw this recently. I'm not going to name names. If you want to know names, sign up as a member. I'll tell you in, the, in our private Discord channel. <laughs> Honestly, there are very young people out there that are making these projects. I have nothing against young people making projects as long as they're smart and they're not too naive and that uh, they test their code before launching it and to the public like this. Okay, if you're, if you're really that clever, okay, test your, your code or, and learn how to test your code before you launch, okay? 
I'm all, I'm all for like people uh, creating new stuff uh, and and being uh, entrepreneurs and uh, you know trying to make a buck and everything. I'm all for that. I, I don't mind if it's a 16 year old that uh, is creating a new protocol in his uh, in his parents' basement. Okay, coding away. There's nothing wrong with that. Just code properly and get. Uh, test your code and uh, get the multi-sig and uh, you get audited and follow the process okay but it's true there are a lot of young people that have no experience they don't know what they're doing okay and they're uh, launching protocols like this okay and that's why you as investors need to be on your guards okay and that's why I'm making this presentation today all right so all right, so again, do we have evidence that the contracts are secured by multi-sig? If so, where is that multi-sig? Okay, who are, uh, can we see the addresses of those multi-sig people? Okay, and so on. And hopefully some of these uh, uh, multi-sigs are not so anonymous. Okay, try to find people that are respected in the, uh, in the crypto world and ask them if they want to join your, your, your multi-sig. Okay, you don't even have to pay them, all right? And our, and so yes or no, and do we have evidence that the team is planning to have multi-sig? Planning is still better than saying, no, we don't want to, but uh, it's not that much better than not having anything. So basically, if it's no and no, you avoid unless you have at least three or four yeses for the team. Remember the, the first part. If the team is well respected and so on, okay, I kind of like it, it kind of mit mitigates the risk somewhat. But if the team is that good, they should have a multi sig already and they should have an audit already. So it doesn't mitigate that much, in my opinion. All right. Okay. Now that we evaluated the team, check if uh, the there's an audit and check if there's a multi-sig. The next step is looking at the actual protocol and figuring out how is it generating that yield, okay? Because a lot of that's where most of the scams are found. Now, here's that, that little cloud there. We want the protocol to generate real value for investors. What does that mean? A lot of people seem to be confused about this. Generating value doesn't mean I take money from uh, your pocket and I put it in that guy's pocket. That, that, that's not generating value. That's called Ponzi. And there's a lot of those right now. Why? Because a lot of investors have no clue what a Ponzi scheme is. Or they say, eh, I'm smarter than everyone else. I'm going to enter early. Ca uh, cash in when the APY is super high and then sell everything uh, as, uh, as soon as possible. So there's a lot of people that think like that also. And that's that just bad. <laughs> okay, The Ponzi itself is bad and that behavior is bad because it kind of encourages people to create more Ponzi's. Okay? But long term, the Ponzi's all fail. That's the problem. When Mr. Ponzi invented that scheme, okay, if it was good, it would still be operational today. It isn't, okay? You know, remember Bernie Madoff? He did a Ponzi scheme. Why do you think he's in jail for the rest of his life? Because he did a Ponzi scheme and it failed. It failed. If it was a successful uh, financial product, everybody would do it and nobody would feel scammed but it's a scam okay it only works if you always have new people putting money into the system because you're taking uh, new money that you give to your earlier investors and you keep doing this over and over over and over over and over so the last people in always lose out and only the very earliest people win. And the only way that they don't lose out eventually is to get out of the system with their gains. All right. So generate value. 
okay? The project has to create something of value. Just look at the projects like uh, Uniswap. They provide you with the service to be able to exchange any token for any other token. They charge you a small fee, 0.03%, I think. That fee is given to the people that deposit money in the liquidity pools. If you have a lot of money in the liquidity pool and, it, and that pool is very popular, you're going to collect a ton of fees, passively doing nothing. You're not hurting anybody, you're providing a service you're risking your own money to help people swap between, let's say, Ethereum and USDT. Whatever. So that, 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 that's a real service. That provides real value. Okay? You go to Abracadabra. You deposit collateral. They allow you to borrow a stable coin that you can uh, use and invest anywhere you want. Or cash out and buy some fiat with it if you wanted to. Okay? You could deposit uh, your uh, one, uh, rep memo tokens there, okay? Borrow uh, some MIMS, trade those MIMS for USDT, go to uh, Binance, and then deposit uh, fiat in your bank account, and then buy yourself a new car. Whatever, okay? That's real value. That's real value. There's a ton of great projects that provide real value out there. But you also have a lot of scams. You need to be aware of that. So, is the protocol only redistributing tokens from other investors? Yes. It's a scam. That's a Ponzi. You're just re redistributing the money. You're just moving money around from this guy's wallet to that guy's wallet. That's it. Ring nodes. Most of the node and the new wave of node things are not really nodes. They're just Ponzi schemes and they take cash from your pocket and put in that guy's pocket or wallet. So that, that new wave of nodes, okay, it's uh, the original project was like strong nodes. And Ring Nodes said that they copied the model. They didn't. And it's just a Ponzi. If you look at the ring right now, you can see that their Discord is dead for the last two days. There was a message on a, a day ago from uh, the founder, and he complained that some people were saying bad things about him and so on and so forth. And, uh, and uh, you know, he was trying to reassure people. But soon after this message was posted, nobody could post anything on Discord. Discord is totally dead. Same thing with their Telegram and same thing on their uh, Twitter. So what does it look like? Does it look good? Does it? It looks like uh, they're running away with the cash. That's what it looks like. I don't have more evidence. I didn't go and investigate uh, the treasury and see where the money is going or whatever. I, I just look at uh, the, the three social media for this, and they all look dead right now. Really not a good sign. Okay? And same thing with all those copies of ring nodes right now. As a soldier nose that doesn't look uh, that hot right now. Uh, and, and many others. Okay? I'm not saying that every single one of them is bad. I'm just saying avoid all of them. Because... Many of them are going to be scams, okay? And unless they are edited, unless they are multi-sigged, unless uh, the, the team is docs or KYC'd or public, don't touch them. Personally, I think it's too risky. Let's go back to our chart. All right. Here's another thing that happens. It happens even with legit pro uh, projects, okay? Is the protocol minting unlimited, uh, an unlimited number of farm tokens? Uh, this happens to legit projects, uh, especially DeFi 1.0, okay? Like basically everything that copied Uniswap. Uniswap is, I was lucky they were the first one and they got millions of people using the project and, and so on. And it, it is quite successful, okay? And then a lot of people tried to copy that model and they start, uh, you know, boosting 
the APYs with farm token. And the problem with farm tokens is that you have to produce them in unlimited amounts. So there's uh, insane inflation. And when there's inflation, the value of the token tanks. One of the uh, worst or best example of this is Iron Finance ICE token. Not to be confused with the Popsicle ICE token. Absolutely different. Okay, not the same model at all. Popsicle is much better, in my opinion, than Iron Finance. Uh, let me show you Iron Finance ICE. Today, uh, even today, it's still tanking. I uh, lost another 10% as if it was not close to zero enough yet. So I don't know if you can see on the left side of the chart here, but it was uh, close. Uh, it was $11.47 when it launched. And the day after it launched, it dropped to a couple of dollars. And then uh, a couple of days after that, it went to 35 cents. And now it's at 0 0.00015 something. According to uh, CoinGecko, it lost nearly 100% of its value since it launched. Why? They just minted a gazillion of them. Okay? They minted so many and so fast. Okay? At one point, at the first couple of days okay, of the relaunch of uh, Iron Ice, they, uh, they had a couple billion dollars in their vaults. The whales came in, the whales left, and there was no money left. Okay, and the, 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 the token tanked instantly. Very bad design, very bad design. The team is legit, they're, they're audited and uh, everything. We, we, uh, we knew them and so on and so forth. It was bad design, okay? So even after you verify all the other stuff that we talked about, if a project is not designed properly, it can fail and you can lose all your money. Okay, so be aware of that. So I'm showing you like different kinds of projects that are often not good, right? Is the protocol charging huge entry or exit fees or both? Scam. Avoid this like the plague. Example, Titano. Horrible project, in my opinion. Okay, maybe you you have a different opinion, but from what I I can see with my uh, my eyes, it's not fantastic. Why am I saying that? A lot of people are gonna hate me. I know. So uh, they claim you're gonna earn a hundred thousand uh, percent APY. Okay, fixed. Also fixed. Imagine that. All right. So they have the tokenomics. So look, look at the amounts here. Automatic LP. 5%, 5% of the trading fees return to the liquidity and shrink titanos increasing collateral. What are they doing with the other 95% of the LP? Where are they going? They, they're giving us only 5% of the LP fees that this project is collecting. They're sucking away 95% of it. Going where? I don't know. Re you have to learn how to read this stuff. Treasury, 3% of the purchases and... Uh, what is this? It's too small. 8% of the sales go directly to the Treasury where it supports the IF. Okay. Where's the rest going? And then the same thing here, risk-free value. 5% of the trading fees are redirected to the uh, risk-free value, which helps sustain and back the sticking reward. Okay. What are they doing with the rest of the fees? Mystery. Okay. Um, I'm, whoopsie, sorry. I'm not exactly uh, excited about that. And then when I go and look at the documentation here, um, by the way, this is their treasury address. And do I have it here? I think I put it here. Yes, that's their treasury address. 
there's no cash there. Not a lot anyway. 382,000 bucks in their treasury at the moment, according to D-Bank. Maybe there's other money somewhere else that I haven't seen, but that's the treasury address that I copied from here. Same, and I pasted it here. It shows right now that in the wallet, they've got BNB for uh, 382,000 bucks, and that's it. That's it. I don't see the LP pools that they're supposed to be um, depositing in. If you look at other projects, you see that. You look at their treasury, okay, uh, and you, you see LP pools and you see, uh, you know, various kinds of assets that they have, okay. I mean, maybe they've got another treasury. I don't know. Uh, I'm just using the data that uh, I, I found on their uh, documentation, okay. Now, the other thing that worries me is uh where are the fees they're talking about the fees in there oh, titanium buy and sell fees look at this the amount of the fees 13 percent of for buys 18 percent for sales for sales allow titano to provide titano holders with uh stable high uh 102 percent uh 100 percent uh fees uh annually so what are they doing you buy the token, they charge you 13%. Okay, so you put a hundred bucks in there, you, 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 uh, they take $13 and you only have $87 deposited. Okay. And then if you decide to take your money out, Okay, of course, uh, you're supposed to be receiving some APY. I mean, 100,000% like this, it takes a year to get, okay? You're not going to get it uh, in a week. All right, so a lot of people buy and, and, and then they stake and then they unstake their tokens. And, uh, you know, they, they're going to have to pay these huge fees. They're going to have to pay 18% to exit. So le le let's say you only kept your money there for a short while, right? A month, let's say. Well... You're not going to earn a ton of money out of this, okay? You're definitely not. 100,000% is not that much. This is APY. Okay? You're probably going to earn a maximum of like 10%. You better take them doing the maps super quickly in my head. You're probably going to earn maybe 10% on your $87. So you earn like, uh, what, 8 bucks, let's say. All right? So you, you start with 100. You get deducted 13%. So you're down to 87 now you earn eight bucks and you say, eh, I don't like this project. I want it. I want out. So now you uh, got 96 bucks and then they're going to deduct 18% uh, of that. So about 15 bucks uh, taken out again. So you lost like 30 bucks. Uh, do, do, do you really, uh, come on, do you need this? It's a scam. It's even worse than a Ponzi. They're charging you left and right for no reason. It's like one of those uh, mutual funds I used to see back in the 80s. It had these huge entry fees, huge, okay? Uh, there was this uh, mutual fund company, I remember, they used to charge for the, uh, okay, you, you were to, uh, to sign up for a plan and you deposited money every month, okay? And for the first year, they charge you 50% entry fee. And then uh, you had like a 10% exit fee later. Oh, it was ridiculous. Anyway, th 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 this, this is it. This is the same thing. And the, the worst thing is they're not creating value. They're not investing this anywhere to generate value for the investors. And you saw there's nothing in the freaking treasury. There's no liquidity pools there. What do you see here? There's nothing invested. It's just cash waiting to be taken out. It's crap. Okay. I mean, maybe there's another place where they're investing the money and actually earning something for the uh, the investors, but I can't find it yet. I can't find it. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see it. It's not there. All right, next. All right, is the protocol an own fork with an impossibly high APY? We've seen a lot of these recently, okay? There's been like 50 different own forks that came out and went. 
A lot of them have failed. Some of them were total scams. They were rug pulls. And others are trying to survive after uh, the APY went down. Token went from uh, $500 to five cents. And, you know, because uh, people uh, were discouraged when the uh, price of the token went from something unpronounceable to something they, they could figure. Uh, so an example of this is uh, Parrot's DAO. Be careful, there's a lot of Parrot projects out there. Some are real, some are legit. But Parrot's DAO is a scam and a rug pull. Uh, where's the picture? The picture is here. Yeah. So if we look here, can you pronounce this? No, don't buy it. If you don't know what this is, okay? If you don't know how to pronounce this insane number here, too risky for you. That's what that means. Don't get into this kind of crap, even if it's a legit project. Why? Because the price of the token is going to be high for a short while. And then eventually they have to reduce this APY because you cannot sustain this for more than a few days. And, and when the, 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 the APY drops to something more reasonable, like, I don't know, 100,000% or a million percent, even though that's still very high, people panic and they, uh, they dump the token. So whatever you've got, you're going to end up with 95% less in a matter of minutes. Okay. So if you see anything like this, don't do it. It's either a rug pull waiting to happen or a, a pump and dump waiting to happen. We've seen a lot of these. We've seen a lot of these. All right. So some are scams, some are legit, but better to avoid because of the pump and dump. Now, finally, do you understand how the yield is generated? So you go on, on, on a project, right? And tell you, okay, we're going to give you, uh, I don't know, 100,000%. Uh, okay, sounds nice. I'm going to do that. Okay, can you sustain this? How? Where's the money coming from? Where are you investing my money? Okay, if you cannot answer any of those questions, it's a scam. Avoid like the plague. You are the yield. If you don't know where the yield comes from, it's coming out of your wallet. Okay? Remember this. This is uh, crypto world, okay? You are the yield. If you don't know where the, where the yield is uh, coming from, how they generate money out of this, then they generate money by scamming you. Yes. That's the truth. <laughs> All right. So if after all this, you pass all the, the, pro the project passes all these tests, consider investing a small amount of money, not your whole portfolio. I hate to see these stupid people all the time on Discord, Twitter, Yahoo, uh, YouTube or whatever. And they say, Oh, I lost $85,000 on parrots or whatever it was. Oh my God. Why you put so much money there? Did you know any anything about the project? Do you know who's the... Okay. Are you going to go and give $85,000 to the first guy that asks you on the street there without knowing anything about him? Come on. Why are you doing it on crypto? <laughs> Because it's got a web page and a parrot on it. What? Or a dog? You know, Snow Dog. Yeah, that went well. Actually, Snow Dog seems to have been legit. But, terrible project. Okay? It's still there. It's still there as far as I can tell. Okay? Token tank and state tanked. Okay? crazy project ridiculous ri ridiculous idea in the first place again you know impossibly high apy but to be fair they did warn you that they were shutting down the project in eight days so if you were stupid enough to stay beyond eight days <laughs> but no it's a general rule avoid any of these stupid things avoid 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 yeah okay you have to lose the fear of missing out on, on things, okay? Why? There are a million projects out there. There are lots of good, honest projects. A lot. 
Okay, there are a lot of them. So quit trying to find the next highest APY crazy scheme thing that comes up, you know, that you see on YouTube, TikTok or wherever. Okay. They're not worth your money. A lot of them are scams. Uh, and some are not scams, but badly designed projects. Okay. Sometimes it's honest folks doing stupid things. Okay. Sometimes it's bad folks that, uh, that try to steal your money. So you have to avoid bad people and you have to avoid fools. <laughs> So hopefully some of this stuff here helps you avoid a lot of bad projects. It's still not a guarantee that the project is not going to fail. Look, I, 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 I saw some project, everything was, they, they, they checked everything. Ding, 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 ding. Everything looked good. A hacker found a, a hole in it. The project was audited already. A hacker managed to find a hole. And he found a way to suck the money out. So. Even after doing all this work, it's still not a guarantee. That's why I'm saying right here, people, right here, consider investing a small amount. Small. Like something like 1% of your portfolio. If it's a brand new project and you don't know much about it, you don't know. If it's battle tested, it has to be battle tested. If you want to put more money into something, make sure it's battle tested. How long has it been around? A year, two years? Okay. Has it been hacked yet? No? Has it been audited multiple times? Yes. Okay. All right. That looks battle tested to me. Okay. Do they have, uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention in this list. Do they have a bug bounty? That's one thing I need to add on this chart. Bug bounty is very good at, uh, security feature. Okay. If they say, okay, we're going to give $100,000 to the next hacker that finds a hole in our project, but our hacker is going to say, okay, well, I could make an honest 100000 instead of uh, trying to break into the project and maybe have the police on, uh, on my ass later if they find me. See? So uh, you, you, you have to be proactive in trying to prevent problems to happen. And this list of uh, things, this chart, okay, is to help you become more proactive. All right, that's it for this video. It's getting long. Uh, <laughs> If you like this kind of stuff, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell. Download the free book. It's free. All you have to do is put your name, your email address, hit the submit button. You get a big fat button that says download the free book. And if you miss that button, you get another one in your email that says download the free book again. And if you don't want a free book, fine. Go to Amazon. Give $5.99 to Jeff Bezos. Jeff will send me a whole dollar later. See ya.